So let's just talk. So recently, I always had this, like I've been wanting to have this conversation for months, but I haven't known exactly how to put it. And it's a lot of topics like this that I've been like, that's been coming to mind. And I'm like, I'm gonna just start making videos about everything. Call it an unpopular opinion, call it a uncommon opinion, call it a hidden opinion. Naturally, I feel like there's a subtle divide between the old school and the new school, right? And there always has been. Let me tell you how I've seen it in my everyday life. So, mind you, I'm a hairstylist from Houston, Texas. And um, we have, like, we, we have hair groups. So, like, online, um, on Facebook, you can go and you can type in, like, Houston Hair and Braids. And there'll be a group. And these groups have, like, massive amounts of people. Um, there's so many places that I'm going to take this conversation. So, let's just start with this idea. So mind you, in the beauty industry, from 2013, they've been lax in a lot of requirements and licensing regulations. And I personally think it's just because so many people are doing it and it's hard to try to like micromanage every situation. And at some point you have to hold the consumer responsible. It's not a surgery or anything. So for instance, if somebody goes to get a surgery from someone with fake credentials, that's a big deal because it affects your health. But something as far as the beauty industry is so much um, enforcement that you have to do for something that's not killing people. It's like, okay, let's relax it because we're hiring people out to these spots to regulate everything. Let's just relax these regulations. And a lot of things since 2013 have been relaxed. The beauty industry is a, less, a little bit less structured. So a lot of people were forced to get their degrees and their um or their certifications for certain things and it's like now you have this new generation because remember every generation kind of gets stronger every generation gets wiser you know so it's just like um i feel like there's an indirect animosity that this new generation gets to come you know the older generation was forced to adhere to certain protocols and requirements and now you have this younger generation that is fearless they charge what they believe that they're worth they don't mind setting boundaries and when i say boundaries we have policies and late fees and you know that type of stuff and we we are getting paid for our time we're charging what we feel like we're worth rather than you know going with the we don't really have to follow a trend like it's a, a market for everybody now you know what i'm saying and i feel like there's a slight subtle animosity towards the younger generation and you see this because they challenge our practices they challenge our knowledge you know what i'm saying and i feel like now we can expand this beyond the beauty industry we have people that went to culinary art schools but then you have these new people that are coming out i was in a houston hair group this one girl is doing lingerie meals she's doing her own thing she never went to school for um creating and she never went to culinary art school but she does romantic dinners and she wears lingerie that is her innovative approach and it's an audience for her you know but then you have people that this is so distasteful and da 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 da, da you know and um i do think morals like are the older generation it was led a lot by morals and morals that weren't even necessarily their general moral buildup but morals that were handed to them values that were handed to them and now this new generation is a little bit more fearless to do things that they're comfortable doing and not necessarily being led by the morals that you know like a governing system but more we're our own government we're our own systems we connect with ourselves and we don't really connect with we're not governed by any value or morale. You know what I'm saying? And um, my only point of view is from an entrepreneur and something that I want to do, I want to help the kitchen entrepreneurs because at the end of the day, I think that it's great that you have people that are using their own their own gifts and talents. The, the fact that you don't have to go to school to master something, but you're able to go and master it and build a business from what you have today. And I feel like this older generation is discouraging that, you know, even on a consumer uh aspect the older generation is discouraging the younger generation because we are so fearless and innovative and we step out on faith and we'll we take off and we don't have to be governed or have that discipline necessarily we're able to step on our platforms and be a little bit less professional and we still it's a market for us you know and they mad
they mad. But this is the thing. Both generations can grow from one another. I personally feel like the younger generation can grow from um the older generation if we take the the principles that they have as far as discipline you know the younger generation sometimes we a little bit greedy we sit up and we like you know i i could just do three weeks and i could travel and i don't you know we're not so indebted to our clientele and being there for them and showing up for them like the older generation is they're very disciplined and they're consistent and they get up every day in their routine and we don't necessarily have that same those attributes and although we shouldn't be forced to have them. There are things that we can learn from each other. The older generation can take the stick out their butt and be a little bit more innovative. And instead of complaining all day about their jobs, allow their jobs to be a little bit more for them. Start canceling out people. Don't fear turning away people that are not for you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so much that we can both learn from each other. And this is my thing. If I have a gift of speaking, you're not going to tell me that because I didn't go to school for, what do people go to school for? Communication, which nine times out of 10, people go to school for communication and don't even use those degrees for what it's supposed to be used for. They go be a teacher or something. But because I don't have prerequisites and um, certificates in an actual stationary piece of paper to tell you guys that this is my gift, I don't have to adhere to that. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean that there's still not a way that I could start today. You cannot tell me if God is instilling, um, driving me to take off with an idea because I don't have a piece of paper to back me in that area or because I didn't go um, and subject myself to four years of schooling, you know, for certain things. That doesn't mean that I'm still not called to do what I'm doing. We're so programmed to believe that the, just like it's police officers, it's police officers that went out, they went to their schooling, they, you know, they, they adhered to the protocol and they're still not shit. As people in general, they mess with people, they abuse their authority. Like a piece of paper doesn't really identify if you're valid to teach something, you know? And I was actually listening to this um, live on TikTok today. And usually where we tell people, oh, you're not a doctor, who called you to, you don't have any prerequisites. But there are a lot of like holistic teachers that allow their bodies in general to, and are intuitively led and they're healing people. The people that are selling sea moss and the people that are, you know, teaching you ways to like spiritually release certain things. It's all different types of callings out here for people. And every calling isn't gonna be backed by a piece paper you know the current constant debate in the beauty community when we're talking more about protective styles this is the thing licensed stylists a stylist should be licensed if they are treating natural hair so cutting treatments um blowout silk presses all of that personally that is what i believe because you are no longer treating extensions you're treating that actual person's hair so therefore if anything happens to their scalp or their hair in the process you are legally liable you know what i'm saying now with weaves and braids and things of that nature if someone says you know what i do really really bomb weaves and braids however i don't have a license the only thing that is stopping me from offering the service that i'm so good at is washes um and you know dealing with natural hair I, I don't have a license for that however i'm cold at braiding so i'm gonna tell you to come washed and blown out so that i don't have any liability for your natural hair all i'm doing is braiding it or styling it or adding extension or adding extensions to it um period the license should not discount that person's gift. They're saying that I don't have the license. So go to someone that is licensed and then you come to me for braids. And some people be like, who want to do all of that? And da 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 da, -da. I want to go to a one-stop shop. Then do that. But if this person, say this person is your daughter, this person that has this talent but doesn't have the paper to back them up. This is your daughter and she wants to get a job but... This is what she's good at, and this is what's going to bring in the most money. Are you going to tell your daughter, well, girl, you don't got a license. You shouldn't do that. Or are you going to help her find a way to be able to provide that service with being covered without having a license? 
Do you know what I'm saying? It's like people are mad because it's entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs in general that are finding ways to move around the, you know, these protocols and these regulations and you're mad, period. That's what it is. You're mad. They found a way to still make their coin, do what they're good at, and guess what? An audience supports them. It's one thing if they're doing it, nobody supports them, and they're complaining, and you're like, you don't even have a license. But the fact that I don't have a license, I still have an audience, and I'm still legally doing what I'm able to, you know what I'm saying? That is a thing that I feel like bothers people. I feel like it's a lot of older generation people that didn't have that ability to do something that they liked without being governed by... A piece of paper or by a school and it's people out here that are doing it you know what i'm saying like that is my thing put yourself in that person's shoes if you have a talent or a gift but you're not backed by paper you can still do what you want to do just find be innovative that's what you do you form solutions okay i want to it's people that want to start open up um it's people that want to open up drive through daiquiri places but they have to start with just uh getting a regular license and you know what i'm saying uh, a regular license to serve liquor and say for instance that license is too expensive so what am i gonna do i'm gonna start i'm gonna create a recipe book you know what i'm saying i'm gonna start with what i have a, a cocktail recipe book or i'm gonna start a youtube channel and show people how to make cocktails at home i'm gonna start with what i know because i didn't go to school to become a bartender doesn't mean that i'm still not cold with making the drinks and it doesn't mean that i'm not significant enough or am i i'm not an expert enough to start somewhere it's just a lot of people starting with what they have and it's other people that are mad because they didn't know that they had that ability, you know? And I feel it heavily and it's annoying. You know what I'm saying? It's very annoying. Start with what you have and get out your head about everybody else and what they think because nine times out of 10, that is their own insecurities. Because I know the real stylist that's in their bag, they don't give a damn about a kitchen stylist, anything. You know what I'm saying? They're worried about their own back. Because when you look at Arrogant Tay and all of these other stylists, nine times out of ten, they be in a home, somebody's home, where they, they're traveling to a client or a client is traveling to them. A lot of them are not just out here booking studios and stuff like that unless they're, they're they have a class or people are watching them. But when you look in the background of their videos, they be in a damn house. But they have clout, so it's cool. We're just going to inflict trauma and abuse upcoming entrepreneurs because they don't have their clout yet they follow in their dreams with the best that they have today you know what i'm saying like i keep allowing i want to make a patreon so bad and i want to teach people how to do exactly what i do like everything from being the kitchen stylist to filing your taxes to you know what i'm saying um just everything and it's not even going to just be for beauty but anybody that want to start what they enjoy doing today and just put a price tag on it and just take off I want to do something for us, but I get so in my head because I'm like, you know, I went to business management. I went to school for business management, but then, you know, like just all in my head about, well, should I uh, take an entrepreneurship class or should I? No, the proof is in the pudding with my story. I'm able to do what I something. I'm able to do something from home and provide for my kids and be at home with them. Period. Here is my recipe. I'm going to teach you how to do what I did. I'm not saying that I'm the smartest person on earth and I can teach you the ins and outs of taxes and everything. But what I am saying is I was able to do this in my life and I'm going to share with you. I don't need no prerequisite. I know that the proof is in my pudding. So if you got the proof in your pudding, if you make some bomb ass meals, but you don't have no culinary arts degree, if you do some bomb ass hair, but you not licensed, figure out how you can start today. So in your state, if it is not legal to touch somebody's head without a license, start you some wigs, find you a good ass braid uh, bender with a good lace and do wigs or, you know what I'm saying? Do classes on how to slay yourself. Like it's so many ways that you could start today. And when you separate yourself from what the old generation is saying or what these people that know that you, you're, you, you cold with it, but they wanna use your um, lack of institutional knowledge 
over your head when you get out your head about what them think people think and know that everybody has an audience and i'm gonna attract somebody to me regardless that's when you take off because it's people out here 18 year olds that don't have no life experience under their belt and they were able to do something for themselves and they just teaching other people how to do it or they found out that they're good at this thing and they might not have the credibility um, of a paper from an institute, but they're cold and it shows, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, they're doing it. What's stopping you? If you be hating on a younger person or somebody, because I can even say like with myself, there are 18 year olds doing what I wish that I could be doing right now because they have the faith, they, they have the... Um, courage they have the security mentally and you know they're not insecure about their talents and gifts i can say the same thing about them i can sit here and hate on them or i can admire what they're doing and figure out how can i get in my bag and be that confident to know that i got something here okay i might not have the, these institutions to back me up but it's something cold within me because i was able to do it for myself i help people every day they tell me how knowledgeable i am i ask people that have been owning their own businesses that uh, for years and that are way older than me that are edified by some of our conversations. So there's obviously something within me and no, I don't have the paperwork to back me. And yeah, it took me a long time to graduate and yeah, it'd be confusing sometimes and one day I wanna do this and, but there's someone that could be edified because I'm always edifying people, they tell me. So building that confidence up for yourself and getting out your head about how they can do it and why they're able to do it and why you have to take this path and why you, you know what I'm saying? Step into your power, into your creativity, heal your sacral chakra energy. You know what I'm saying? Build your solar plexus energy. Step into your creativity and do it for yourself. Stop pointing a finger and being so mad that other people are using their talents and gifts to the best of their ability. That's like these PPP loan people that are sitting back and, oh, yeah, I got the PPP loan. Are you just mad because you didn't get it? Are you? Because I've never met so many people that's so worried about other people's bags and what they got going on in their life. Never have I ever, unless you're mad that you're misusing your time and abusing your time and neglecting your gifts. I'm standing in my power though. <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's a, a shift in the energy. You can either be a hater and be down here and be low vibrational and be mad that you, you know what I'm saying, that you did what you were led to do and your entrepreneurship or your growth or whatever, or you can... Take it as a high vibrational lesson and you can see that it's other people stepping in their power. And, you know, um, if the ways that you were stepping in your power aren't as beneficial as you thought, that there's other ways that you can move around, be edified by each other. The old school is discrediting the new school and the new school disregards the old school. But we can both be edified by each other in real life because there are it is textbook knowledge that's important you know what i'm saying but as well there are things that they don't teach you in cosmetology school there are things that they don't teach you in institutions like all of this talk about oh she's not licensed da, 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 da. most unlicensed stylists are doing protective styles guess what in all of these cosmetology schools nine times out of ten they're not teaching you real in-depth lessons about protective styles so y'all are mad because people are unlicensed and the thing that they're offering, you don't even really need a license for. Are you just mad because you took the time to get your license and now all of these innovative techniques have come out where you really don't even really have to mess with anybody's hair. And I'm not saying that licensed hairstylists could ever be replaced because we will always need somebody to take care of our manes we will they know so much about color and all of this stuff they know it's so much stuff that like unlicensed stylists can benefit from but don't trick yourself licensed stylists into believing that you can't benefit from these unlicensed stylists these wig professionals and these um protective style stylist people also the, the people that are, well, y'all don't even wash hair and y'all don't even, if it works for my business, if I have clients that don't mind getting their hair done in the home, if I have clients that don't mind getting washed in my sink, I don't understand why it's a problem for you. I have an audience. I, it's a market for me. 
They don't mind. My clients, nine times out of ten, they come when they get off work. They don't want to be at my house all night. They don't mind coming wash. Some of them, they don't want to deal with the come and wash stuff, but they also don't want to be in a salon where other people are looking at them or where it's a barbershop right out the door and they when they come in looking crazy, the men be looking at them. So everybody has their reasons. But the thing is, there's a market for everybody just as well. <clears throat> just as there's people that are like, I'm not going to her house. That's trifling. Like, I'm not... It's a market for them. They can go to somebody's suite or to the a salon. It shouldn't be no judgment. At the end of the day, it's proven that there's a market for everybody. I saw it on TikTok. There's, look, on TikTok, when you go on TikTok, you'll see people cracking eggshells, literally, like, cracking them and um, peeling the shell off piece by piece, making sure that the membrane of the egg does not pop and people watch it and they sing us and they sing us and they sing us and i'm like so watch somebody take a shell off of an egg and then you scroll to the next person and you got people um that are doing something else elmo tickle me elmo talking stuff to people people are gifting him then you go to the next live and it's somebody that's creating jewelry and she's not even talking it's just music on people are gifting her there is a lane for everybody there is an audience for everybody some people love asmr you know and i i get stuck on asmr for hours they just be like <laughs> like on tiktok girl they be <laughs> And I just be stuck on it. But then there's somebody else that'll be looking and be like, what the hell are you watching? Then I can go to the next live and somebody's popping a pimple and other people are like, gross. And then me, I've been watching it for three hours. Like there is a lane for everybody. If there is something that, you know what I'm saying, you're embarrassed about taking off on or you have a gift or this quirky thing that you do that a lot of people like and you entertain, um, step into your power and do it, period. You don't have to be backed by the world, even if you don't feel comfortable sharing it with your general audience, because that's another thing. A lot of us try to, <clears throat> we get a business idea and we go and we share it straight to our personal Facebooks and our personal Instagram and our personal YouTube or our personal Twitter or whatever. And we get so discouraged because all of these purple, the, these um, personal people from our life that our gifts and talent isn't even for them. You know what I'm saying? Your biggest supporters be strangers but we go and we show them stuff that's not even for them and then they tell us this not gonna work it's not even for me and i don't i'm not interested in that or they gonna talk about you or you know just plant or i can't believe you doing that online or when did you post this or whatever just those planting those negative seeds and something that you were so proud about or so confident about start your own audience first before you share it with family and friends because you're just going to upset yourself nine times out of ten. Start a new audience. See who's naturally attracted to you. If your soul tribe is outside of your family and friends, you know what I'm saying? Start trying to plant seeds on different platforms, you know, go on live or something and see who's attracted to you. I did it the other day. I was on this. I'm not going to tell y'all the platform, but I was on this platform and, you know, I was in my feelings at first and then I it just switched and I was talking about spirituality and I was talking about, you know, how we've been deceived as a people and I was just talking and I looked up and I had 1.3 thousand people following me, like watching me at one time. And it's so crazy because I thought that only that it was just you know 1.3 thousand people total but i looked and at the end of the video it was 46 thousand people that tuned in and watched me and i got like 156 followers from that all in once and every time i go live i get followers it doesn't matter what i'm um i just always have a message you know and the people that be in there be legit you know what i'm saying so um but it was so fulfilling and rewarding. And those weren't people that I knew. Those were strangers. And they're telling me my message resonates with them. And it's even more fulfilling because you know that it's like confirmation, you know, that you're led to talk to strangers. And when you talk to them, your message is spot on versus, you know, holding your, your, your personal people captive and listen to me and go support my business and please support me. Go like this. And because allow a normal natural audience like i did with this youtube now i have shared it to my personal page and stuff like that however the most people that support me are not those personal people those personal people they go watch it and they don't like it and they don't even comment they just watching it and i don't know until we have a conversation and they be like girl i looked at your youtube video 
my real audience is the people that stumbled across my video, the people that were led towards my videos. And those are the people that check on us and love us. They, you know what I'm saying? And sent us gifts and everything. Like, yeah. But this was a this was a message that I really wanted to get off my heart, okay? I had to. A part of my notes is are you really mad that she does hair out of her house? Or are you mad that you had to go get a shop and you still struggle getting uh, clientele, but somebody else is able to do it from home and they're actually getting booked? That's the thing to think about. Okay, and then another good point I put was that like, um, I'll see a lot of the licensed stylists be like, y'all out here paying for this and da 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 for this much and da 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 da. Basically, you're challenging prices and rules. Uh, you're challenging people's prices, rules, and procedures instead of getting inspired by their innovation. Like, damn, people are willing to pay for this? Let me. Like, when I seen people getting gifts and stuff on, um, well, making money, like, and stuff on TikTok, I was like, I didn't, I wasn't like, look at these mother getting money and they ain't even doing nothing. Look at him singing the booth, the doc, and he getting gifts and stuff. Look at them saying all they doing is screaming, let's go to the camera and they getting gifted. I didn't say that. I wasn't mad. I got inspired and I was like, dang, I could do this. And instead I can be, we can have edifying conversations and you know, they can give me if I'm talking about something that resonates or they can give the other side and I could bring different guests on there. Like I started getting inspired and thinking about ways that even though I feel like a lot of people are getting paid i never noticed until i got on tiktok how much disposable income like is on the internet people are literally just sending money you know and i do feel like they send money to insignificant causes but i'm not mad at that insignificant ugh, i'm not mad at that insignificant cause or thing that's insignificant to me that they found a way to make a bag i'm like damn if they willing to pay for this insignificant shit i know they'll pay me for something that's edifying so if you mad about something that you see or you feel slept on and you feel like these people are getting, you know, they're getting rewarded and they're not doing anything, get inspired. Stop getting mad. Okay? Stop getting mad. Get inspired and figure out, okay, if they're able to make this amount and they ain't doing nothing, I can offer this and just imagine. Shit your mindset. We be prisoners and obsessed with other people's success and progress get motivated that's the message of today okay but um let's see if i had any other messages in here each generation is going to progress i can say the same um about these 20 year old millionaires out here i went to college ran up my student loans thinking that um i had to do all of this you know to have stability in this life just to get out to find out that money flows to me freely Okay, if we want to get spiritual, I done went and went to school just to get out of school and totally reprogram my mind to know that I don't need no papers to back me. I don't need anything to back me. At the end of the day, I trust in God and he going to provide for me regardless. If it's a job that I'm at that is challenging my morals and my ethics or whatever, I could quit and I know that God provide for me regardless. If it's a relationship that I got to walk away from and not know What's next? God is going to provide for me regardless. Money flows to me freely. There is no obstacles in my way. When, my, when it comes to money, God is going to provide for me. Source is going to provide for me. At the end of the day, I will not, at the end of the day, I will not fear. I will not stress. I will not worry because it is already done. Period. So I can be an easy hater and be like, damn, I went to school, I done did all of this, I done spent money, got to pay back student loans, I done this, I done took out other loans from the SBA, and I, I panicked, and I thought I needed it, and da 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 but no, I'm working with my walk, this is my walk, this is my journey, this is my life, this is my experience. I'm experiencing it, I messed up, I've done things, I've fallen short, I've fell down, I got back up, I stopped school, I went back, but at the end of the day, these are all things that I needed to do to get my mindset to where it is today. These are all things that I needed to do to build up my confidence. These are all things that I needed to do. We have to shift the way that we think. 
stop living in regret and know, okay, well, now, you know, I went to cosmetology school. I didn't need to, or I went to cosmetology school, but now these other entrepreneurs, they coming out and they going hard and da 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 So now I got this competition. So I need to enhance the things that I use in cosmetology school to set myself apart from these kitchen stylists or, you know what I'm saying? Like, use what you have in your experience to your advantage. Get out of other people's experience. Tap out of their energy and tap into your own. Get out of other people's business and worry about yourself. Run up that bag, honey. That is what we need to talk about today. <laughs> I've been wanting to say this for months, but I didn't know how to articulate the old school versus the new school because it's always been a thing. Okay? It has. But yeah, that is all that I have for you guys today. I'm so happy to talk about these topics. I'm actually about to go film another video about our journeys and our experiences. And, you know, just another mindset shift, y'all. Just like, yes, life is good. And I'm so glad that all of these things have been downloaded into me. And not even that they're new downloads, but that I'm courageous enough to not care about if I make sense or not. Because I'm always like, am I going to make sense to the people? Is, am I talking in circles? But no, like, I'm happy that I can articulate these messages in the way that, you know, that I'm happy that I'm articulating these messages and not worrying about if I'm the right vessel or, you know what I'm saying? I'm just happy that I'm free in my communication right now and that I can share to y'all things that I've been led to share. Okay, y'all. Oh, come look at Miss Bree. Ooh, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> Miss Reagan. But, okay, let me um get them together really quick and go check on my mommy. And then I'll be back recording something new.